the Daytona 24 hours, it's twice around the clock with four drivers. Uh, usually you're doing races upwards of about two to three hours with only two drivers, which isn't so bad, but on a 24 hour race at a place like Daytona, this is a completely different race than we run anywhere else in the world. Racing is something that's fun and unique because when you see it live, it's a completely different view. You know, when you see it on TV, it's it's only it's only so exciting to see a bunch of cars go around in circles for 24 hours, right? Especially the Daytona 24 hours, is such a prestigious race. Daytona alone is is one of the, is a world famous racetrack, and so when you come to this race, the fans, the camaraderie, the atmosphere, uh, everything that leads up to the beginning of this race is, is something crazy. Rolex 24 is a unique race because you get guys from IndyCar, you get guys from motocross, you get guys from NASCAR, you get guys from sports cars, from Formula One, you get guys from all over the world of motorsports. And so this race is not only a big race for the Grand Am people, it's a good way to start off a year. If you can come into Daytona and win, it kind of sets the tone for your year. We had a little issue in the start of night practice. We had about four laps into night practice and and uh, no signs, no warnings, no nothing. And, and uh, my co-driver got over the radio and said we lost a motor. It was a brand new motor. It only had about, uh, about three hours into the motor. And uh, it was really unfortunate. Porsche Motorsports North America got us a new motor. So we were let in a little bit early around 6.30, 7 o'clock the next morning. We had a nine o'clock practice, so for about three hours the team thrashed and worked as hard as they could to put the new one in. We had a good qualifying yesterday. We had a good qualifying and then there was practice after that? Yeah. Is yeah. that what happened? Yeah. Okay. So we you know, decided to swallow a $75,000 motor. Ralph just called me and he said that there's a hole in the side of it. Yeah. They're just trying to finish up the motor. They're just putting it there. So hopefully we can get out before this practice is over. I think for me growing up as a kid, I, I grew up riding dirt bikes and stuff like that with my family. And it just ventured from the dirt to the pavement when I was about 13. My dad took me to a local short track here in Southern California, Irwindale Speedway. And uh, we saw these little legend cars. Me and my dad looked at the race and looked at the cars and said, hey, that's, there's some kids out there driving and, and uh, it doesn't look too hard, not doesn't look too expensive. But uh, you know, six or seven years later, it's bit me in the butt because it's, it's a lot harder than it looks and it's a lot more expensive than, than we thought. I've always been a motorsport fan ever since I was a little kid. Whether it was on road, two wheels, four wheels, motorsports in general was, was a love of mine. I had the eye, I looked at it and I said, I think I can really do this. And then once you're in, it just pulls you in. You know, motorsport's such an addicting sport that once you once you get grabbed into it and once you're you, you've done it once, you just want to keep going and going and going. I have no superstitions, I have no lucky underwear or anything like that or none of that stuff, but the time you're spent in the car, the G-loads that you're faced against, the heat that you're up against, preparation for races are, are huge in our sport. There's a lot of strategy that goes into racing. As soon as a green flag drops, all that strategy goes out the window, right? So before the races, you'll sit together as a team with your engineers, your crew chiefs, the owners, and the other drivers. You all sit together and you'll come up with a game plan. 
It's just like any other sport, you come up with your plays, your play calls, when you're gonna run the plays, and who you're putting in the car, and, and when do you push, and when do you just kind of stay consistent. But as racing goes, you know, it's so unpredictable out there. You have the elements of other cars, cautions, weather. You have all kinds of other elements that factor into that that you don't really have control over. So what we like to do as a team before all of our races is we like to make a game plan on all the things that we can control as a team and we can control as drivers. So I think that when you have that game plan, you're almost expected to follow that game plan to an extent, but you know in the back of your mind that it's gonna change at any moment of the race. Like sport, racing is a team sport, right? Sports like football, you need the coach, you need the owner, you need the quarterback, and, and you need your, your supporting teammates. The engineers would be your coach, your, the drivers would be the quarterbacks, and, and your pit crew would be your, your offensive line. In order for you to win a race, I can only go so fast. The car's got to run, the team's got to do their part. Everybody's got to give 100%. Switch it back on at the driver coming in on the way in. On the way in. Within a lap or two, but if it's oh, is it five laps, say five laps around. Yeah, it it's like here. Four, it's, five, maybe here it's like it's like twenty kilometers, so it's probably four laps here. Yeah, okay. you, your drink bottle is gonna be right here on your hip if you want it. Mm -hmm. should be good. Whiskey in there. <laughs> That's only for in the morning. <laughs> That's after six o'clock, right? Yep. Okay. That sounds good. Cool. Ready? Yep. You know, you're always a little nervous. You always have a little butterflies in you, and that's always good. You, you, you know, you don't want to go into a race overconfident or cocky. You want to be confident, but not overconfident. And and uh, it's always good to be a little nervous and, and get excited. You know, it's it's the Daytona 24 is one of the biggest races in, in the world. So I think for me to be there in the start of the race and the pre-race ceremonies, it kind of was really surreal, and it was hitting me that I'm actually going to do this, and I'm going to be up for the next 24 hours running this car. And for me, the, the, the pre-race ceremony was really special. Uh, I had a lot of family and friends out there that was just able to experience it with me. And like I said, the fans were able to come on there and, and walk along the track and get right up next to you and ask questions and take pictures. And, and that's all cool. I mean, they can actually, there's no other sport where you can actually go down to the infield and, you know, play catch with a quarterback of, before the Super Bowl. And so essentially in racing, you can do that. You can get all the way down to the cars and meet the drivers and take pictures. And so the access that fans have is, I think, something that uh, is really unique, and especially at Daytona. You get to look around at driver intros, and you get to look about the caliber of drivers that are around you. And uh, these are big name drivers from all over the world uh, that have accomplished a lot in the motorsport world in general. And uh, you kind of get to, it puts you in awe to, to look around and see your competitors are, are professional drivers. And, and uh, it's a really special moment, but at the same time, you need to stay, like I said, calm and focused and relaxed. You don't want to get too excited and exert all your energy before the race because you, that's only the start of it, right? You have 24 hours after that. You're pumped and full of adrenaline, and uh, it's, it's pretty easy to stay alert. It, the hard part is, is is keeping that that focus for so long, and you know your body starts to go, your everything starts to get sore, you start getting dehydrated, your mind starts to drift, and uh, you just really gotta stay focused on being focused. So it's a big grid today, 30, 32 cars in the GT class. So uh, we'll be starting 11th, and uh, we'll see if we can make our way up over the time. So. Really the first focus of the first half of the race is really stay clean and uh, drive well. Uh, the strategy today is just to stay out of trouble really. Uh, we're all quick, uh, we're all quite reliable I think and we've got sensible heads so uh, hopefully the double stints we do should get us all the way through to daylight tomorrow and uh, then you never know what's going to happen so fingers crossed we have a good race.
co-driver James brought his trainer from the UK, uh, Stuart. He was a great guy and he offered his help to kind of wake you up before the stint. You may be up and you may not be tired. And physically, you may feel good, but uh, your brain still might be asleep a little bit. And so we just did a couple warm-up exercises to get the blood flowing and uh, prepare yourself that much more for your stint. I always like to take a moment for myself just to relax and kind of take a deep breath in and uh, just remind myself why I'm really here and, and uh, this is supposed to be fun. This is something that I really love and I'm passionate about. You close your eyes, you take a deep breath and you, you just get yourself ready to go. As soon as the car is ready to come into pit road, one of the things I do is I like to visualize all the motions that I have to do when I get in the car. You know, when you do a driver change, there's certain things that you need to do right when you get in the car, as far as where your hands go, what belts you buckle, what buttons you push. You're nervous, you're anxious, uh, you got a lot of butterflies, you may not be thinking clearly. So I just like to remind myself of all those little things that I have to do before I get in. First in out there, first time in this race, and so you're always holding the wheel a little bit tighter, your feet and your toes curl up a little bit tighter, but after a couple laps, you settle down, uh, you start to relax your hands, you start to relax your shoulders, and as soon as your body's relaxed, you get in the zone, you get in your, your little area where you just start clicking off lap after lap after lap, and that's when you really start to feel the car and feel the race and really get into the zone where you're almost in automatic mode where you can almost close your eyes and be able to shift at the same time every single lap, turn at the right time every single turn. You can push the car to its limits and know exactly where that limit is and you know how to go up to that line without crossing it. A lot of the good drivers can get up to that line, that limit line, as quickly as possible and they can hold it and stay there. And they know where that line is and they'll never cross it for two hours. That's when the race really starts and, and that's when you really just put your head down and go to work. I was, I was sleeping and I, I woke up and I, I found out that the car had, was in the garage, but uh, what had happened was we lost fifth gear uh, about 12 hours into the race and we ran it for a little bit. And uh, when my teammate Eric got out, uh, he handed the car over to James. And when James got in, he did about four or five laps and the, uh, he lost all the gears. So once fifth gear blew, we ran it quite a bit without any fifth gear and then uh, it eventually took the toll on the rest of the gearbox and, and basically grenaded the entire casing. And if we had survived the night, we would have been somewhere in the top five coming into the morning. And uh, once sunrise, you still have nine hours left of racing. So I think um, we were on our way to, to execute our game plan, but unfortunately uh, it was a sad end to our race. We still had a lot of time left to fix it, but uh, at that point, there really was no solution to try to fix it or try to get out there or try to put a band-aid on it because the transmission is one of those pieces like the motor where uh, you, you got to fix it and you got to fix it right if you're going to put it out there uh, you can rip a bumper off and slap some duct tape on and still run the race but uh, i don't think zip ties or duct tape can fix a transmission so uh, 
at that point, we were definitely out of the race. Uh, I was disappointed because I didn't get back in there. Uh, the team was disappointed that we didn't finish. Uh, I think everybody was a little disappointed, but uh, I guess that's how they say is that's racing because you, you take the good with the good and the bad with the bad and you move on. Uh, I'm not going to dwell over this. You know, I still have a lot of racing to do this year. Um, the only thing I can do is, is feed my fire and, and come back next year and, and really want to do well. I'll be going to Asia and running full time in the Porsche Career Cup Asia Series, hopefully running for the championship there. And then I'm um, back marking that with about six races here in the Miracle Le Mans Series in, uh, in a GT3 Porsche uh, for Alex Job Racing. So that'll be really exciting for me. Um, I'll be back and forth across the pond a lot, racking up freaking fire mileages, but I think uh, it's gonna be a really fun and exciting year for me.